Okay, so can everybody hear me? Yes. Good. So welcome for the thanks for the introduction and welcome everybody to my talk. Today I will discuss how it is possible to use quantum quenches to explore the anatomy of the fixed point characterizing critical states in parameterization of quantum many body systems. Specifically, as the title suggests, what I will show you is that the real-time evolution of, ob of observables displays two different scaling regimes, one mirroring a quantum pre-thermal fixed point and the other one mirroring a classical pre-thermal fixed point. Yes. Does it work? Oh, thanks a lot. So, actually, this entire discussion can be easily accommodated in a more general picture that you can classify as universality and criticality in and out of equilibrium. So if you think about a classical phase transition, of course, the first example that comes to your mind is a classicalizing model. There, there is a critical temperature that in proper dimension is separating a paramagnetic from a ferromagnetic phase. And the technical tool that you can use to study the critical point is, in the most simplest case, a phi to the fourth theory, field theory. Then, as you know, there are quantum phase transitions that usually are dual to classical phase transitions. So if you consider a quantum many-body system in its ground state and you change the internal parameter of the Hamiltonian associated to that, you can again separate paramagnetic from ferromagnetic transition, for instance, in the case of a quantum IC model. And when I say that they are dual, I mean that indeed you can map the universality class of the dimensional system to its classical higher dimensional counterpart, where the increase in dimensionality is given by the dynamical critical exponent, Z. It's natural to go to the other part of this table and to think about non-equilibrium criticality. Indeed, for the classical case, you start to have a zoo of different instances. Alessio has illustrated the simplest, yet different case of non-equilibrium critical behavior that is aging in Ising model suddenly changed in temperature. Of course, many of you can be experts of other examples of non-equilibrium classical criticality that range from KPZ model, percolation, you can name them. And as you've seen already in the first talk and in the talk by Alessio, the proper formalism to do that is a Martin Sigarose formalism. So you accompany the cross grained order parameter with a response field that hosts inside noise and thermal fluctuations. If you uncover the last window of this table, indeed what happens are a number of questions because it is a research ongoing field. And you would like potentially to list the zoo of non-equilibrium quantum university classes or ask, for instance, if this D into D plus Z mapping exists. And in general, what will destroy non-equilibrium quantum criticality as temperature does for an equilibrium quantum phase transition. Usually, when you have an Ising model in one dimension of finite temperature at large times and space, temperature will give you a cutoff, the De Broglie length, that will destroy long range correlations there. And naturally, there is a number of technical questions you can ask as well, so which should be the proper field theory if you can do an RG in order to understand that. And Quite surprisingly, I would say, uh, these kind of questions have been asked so far in open systems. So typically in driven dissipative quantum many body systems in uh, different instances, very recently in Köln we have uh, proposed an analog of quantum criticality in Markovian quantum many body systems. But then we met Alessio and Andrea that suggested that indeed we can also look at that in isolated systems. And we will build up a collaboration that is the goal of this talk. I summarize the message in this single, very qualitative slide, and then I will go more on focus on the topic. Essentially, what I will tell you is that there are, in the pre-thermal plateau of a quantum many-body system, two non-trivial fixed points, a quantum and a classical one that are extremely sensitive on a specific parameter. This omega naught is the mass of your field theory before the quench. I'm just thinking now that I prepare a system in a Gaussian state with a given mass, omega naught, and then I suddenly change the mass and add interactions. And when I say that they are controlled by this omega naught is because it acts like a temperature. So if you perform a shallow quench, a small value of this omega naught, you will have a long 
amount of scales in which the algae flow will linger close to the quantum point, while if you do a deep quench, a big value of omega naught, you will suddenly reach, reach in the algae flow the classical fixed point. As you have realized, I'm speaking about algae flow, but here there is time. Because the goal is that such dimensional crossover, such RG crossover between fixed points, I didn't speak about dimensions up to now, will be reflected also in observables. As unless you probably anticipated, these two zero and high temperature fixed point indeed can host in isolated system an instance of aging. So the same kind of phenomenology that you presented in a classical system. And when I speak about aging, I mean that here you will encounter an instance of quantum aging because the system is isolated. There is no coupling to buff. The system is its own buff. And then, instead of this simple picture here, what you will encounter at the end of the talk is a double scaling regime that maybe here is a bit portrayed, but anyway, we will have a larger picture. There is a double initial time increase with two critical exponents, quantum and classical, that comes from the quantum and classical perturbable fixed points. So what you get in the RG flow, you get it in the many body dynamics of real observables. Good. So this is the main message. Of course, it is qualitative. I will make it quantitative. Let me start with this slide that is quite popular here in CISA. And I'm speaking about quantum quenches for the sake of clarity. The idea is the sa always the same. You prepare a system in the ground state of a quantum many-body Hamiltonian, and you suddenly change some internal parameter of this Hamiltonian. You do it fast, so the new eigenstates, in some sense, are not the same of the original model. In particular, this one is not an eigenstate, the ground state of the pre-quench Hamiltonian, and so you will have a non-trivial quantum many-body evolution. If you want, you can rephrase the problem in another way. The quench has populated all these many-body eigenstates, in some way, and you want to understand whether the system will relax towards a thermal state in the long time limit, or whether towards some kind of non-equilibrium steady state, which indeed it is what occurred in the first experiments. There is this pioneering work in the group of David Weiss where they considered the sudden quench of, one, of a one-dimensional strongly interacting Bose gas, and they didn't see relaxation towards a thermal state. This kind of non-equilibrium steady states occurring in experiments can be seen in a modern language as precursor of thermal states. Jörg Schmidt-Meyer has shown, considering the coherent split of quasi one dimensional Bose gas, that first you have this relaxation towards a non equilibrium state, a pre thermal state, if you want to call it in this way, and later there will be a slow departure and approach towards thermalization. I said that the systems are integrable. This means that they have an extensive number of conserved quantities, and if you want to characterize the city states, you need more than a usual grand canonical ensemble. You may be aware about this generalized Gibbs ensemble that is summarized in some sense in this more theoretical and pictorial way to represent perthermalization. So you first are quenching an integrable system, more like the first experiment that I discussed. And you have to account for your asymptotic steady state for all the conserved quantities of your model. But in every realistic experiment, as the second kind I was showing, you have always some kind of many-body nonlinearity, some kind of inelastic interaction among particles. And this, in general, can induce a relaxation towards a thermal state. The physics behind this perthermalization is given by two scales. Indeed, first, you will have a dephasing process. This means that your observable can be decomposed as the sum of many oscillating terms. Each one has a slightly different frequency and it harmonic limit the competition and the interference of this object results in a relaxation process. But later, the inelastic scattering term will induce some kind of exchange of energy among the excitations of your system, and this is the only channel through which you can reach a state in which all your excitations have a common temperature. Perthermalization has a long history. It was first announced in the field of particle physics, and later there were the first attempts to extend it to condensed matter of systems. And this inspired uh, Michael and Caroline in 2010 to give the first portrait of this anatomy about perthermalization. And indeed, this motivated color to propose that these GGEs occurring in integrable system are nothing more than this non-equilibrium steady state occurring in perthermalization. 
You can encounter in a number of other situations, it is robust to presence of noise, of to coupling to open systems. You can see it in long ranging interacting systems. People now are attempting more exotic initial state and to go to higher dimensionality. The point is that pre-thermalization, or at least this first plateau, can be easily captured if you worked out a perturbative Dyson equation. But if you want to go further, you need a self-consistent resummation of diagrams. These, at the best of my knowledge, has been done in condensed matter recently with equation of motion methods. However, I will focus my entire discussion on this part that is, if you like, the simplest, but is the truly non-equilibrium one while still you are in a metastable non-equilibrium state. And indeed, the point is that pre-thermalization can host instances of classical and quantum non-equilibrium criticality. So the fact that this can happen is not such a new big thing. What we provide is something else, but let me introduce to the point. So there was a pioneering work in 2010 by Calabrese and Gambassi where in prototypical models like an ON interacting field theory, you can see the existences of the equilibrium criticality. So here yeah, I just provided you the Keldish action, but if you're not familiar with the method, you have just to recognize here the structure of the ON model. There is a mass, and there are quartic interaction, and here is the number of components. We are thinking about a very composite and general quantum quench. So you are simultaneously changing the speed of propagation of quasi-particles, of course, the mass, and you switch on interactions suddenly. This is the generic quench protocol. However, if you want to capture pre-thermalization, what is enough is to do a perturbative one loop, or if you want a one loop self-consistent treatment, it doesn't matter. The point is that if you want, for instance, to get the dressing to your bare mass air, you will have a correction mediated by the interaction and of course, here there will be memory of the initial non-equilibrium condition that you have given to the system. This dressed mass delta of t will be time dependent, but as I said, after some defacing time, it will relax towards a metastable state. And then, if you fine tune your post-quench mass R to a critical value, you can make the whole dressed mass to vanish, opening the door to an instance of criticality which comes together with divergence of correlation length and typical time scales. What these guys have realized, both with perturbative RG and numerical methods, is that essentially there is aging indeed in this critical quench. So let's say told you that if you do a classical critical quench, you get aging, and here it happens the same, but again, the system is isolated. It acts as its own buff. Nevertheless, this has been quite established, so you will get for correlation function, response function, magnetization, scaling behavior akin to the one that Alessio was discussing before. The reason for which I say that there is classical and quantum criticality in this pre-thermal state can be guessed quite easily. If you take your Gaussian green functions, for instance, the correlation green function that is a quite close parent to a distribution function, and you perform a deep quench, this will look like a thermal function. While if you do a shallow quench, a leading order, you will get something that reminds correlation functions at zero temperature. The fact that the omega naught induce a behavior that is very similar to what a temperature will do, will stimulate you to search in your RG equations fixed points that are associated to quantum and canonical scaling, so to zero, and high temperature of canonical power counting. Of course, there will be differences because we are speaking about a non-equilibrium situation. But our goal here in this talk and in this work that I'm presenting to you is to write down a unique set of dimensionless flow equations that captures simultaneously the quantum and the classical pre-thermal fixed point, and we use them to characterize the crossover in the RG flow. You then start imagining that you are close to the quantum fixed point, so you decide to adopt the quantum scaling. This is mirrored by the fact that classical and quantum couplings have the same canonical power counting, but that your temperature quantity, your frequency value of the mass, omega naught, is scaling dimension for like k to the one. It is the same that would happen in an equilibrium situation. And now the trick is that you have to reabsorb inside a new classical and quantum coupling some combination of omega naught. This will result in a set of beta functions, of dimensionless beta functions, that as a structure, but I want to focus on a few ingredients. So first of all, a bit of nomenclature. This is the post-quench mass. And this is the pre-quench mass. Sometimes I use R, sometimes omega. That is, R is equal to omega squared. But 
Don't worry, that's the same story. And this guy here has a trivial flow. There are no corrections. The only flow is given by its canonical dimension, one, as I said. And there is the Z0 that Alessio already introduced. It's a boundary renormalization for the fields that stay on the boundary. You need them because you're doing a boundary FRG approach, so you're breaking time translational invariance and will give you the aging exponent. And what I marked here with a red box is the fact that the canonical dimensions get indeed some corrections, non-trivial, because of this transformation here. And now comes the point. The point is the fact that if you are at a quantum fixed point, so if you are at a fixed point of omega not equal to zero, these corrections are zero, and you get the quantum canonical scaling, and you get the quantum critical exponents. But then, since this guy has an unbounded flow, it will start to run and drive you towards the classical fixed point, high temperature point. This omega not again, is like T. And then what you will get here, because of this difference of sign, reflected by the fact that here you multiply, and here you divide, is that you will get different canonical dimensions. The same canonical dimensions you will get for quantum and classical couplings if you perform ab initio a canonical power counting. So the canonical dimensions of your couplings are flowing with omega naught during the RG flow, deriving you from the quantum and classical preterm fixed point. And now if you wonder whether you can capture the temperature crossover at equilibrium in the same way, the answer is positive. Simply the flow equations are much more cumbersome and complicated, and there is not the time here to discuss it. Because, as anticipated, my goal is to show you that this kind of behavior will be manifest also in real-time dynamics. So, before doing that, let me spend some words about critical exponents and scales involved in this physics. So, as you can see at the leading order in epsilon expansion, you get a correlation length critical exponent. There is the same you would have for the equilibrium fixed points, and it fits very well in this quantum classical correspondence because epsilon is measuring the distance from the upper critical dimensionality. We could say the same for the aging exponent, the one controlling this new phenomenology that I introduced. But essentially, what I want more to stress in this slide is that there are two physical scales. The first one is the Ginzburg scale. It tells you when mean field theory, where perturbation theory breaks down, and when scaling is controlled not anymore by a Gaussian fixed point, but instead being controlled by an interacting fixed point. You can estimate by the breaking of perturbation theory, if you like. And then there is another scale, you know, this is very important. It's an analog of the De Broglie thermal scale, but now omega naught is replaced by temperature. It justifies one more time my analogy between the frequent value of the mass omega naught and the temperature, T. So this is the quantity that the indesistence of non-equilibrium quantum criticality is destroying the fixed point. And this qualitative uh, pattern here can be seen if you numerically integrate the dimensionless beta functions I was showing before. So what you have to focus here is that we have a coupling, G classical, one is good as the other, and different colors are corresponding to different values of omega naught. If omega naught is very big, you directly approach the classical preterminal fixed point, so you don't have this uh, fine structure, just you approach the classical one. Or if you like, the two scale has swapped in a way that you cannot observe the quantum one. But decreasing omega naught, smaller and smaller, instead you will linger how much as you like, how much is small omega naught, close to the quantum fixed point, and then you will go towards the classical one. I heard that I have two minutes, so this is my second last one slide. As anticipated, there is indeed a dynamical crossover that mirrors the RG crossover. In order to see that, we benchmark the RG with some exactly solvable model. The N infinite OM model is exactly solvable indeed. And if, for instance, you do some numerics for the scaling of the response function, you will see that these are just collapsed curves for different instances of quenches. You first will have, as a function of time, scaling controlled by the aging exponent of the quantum preterminal fixed point, and later you will cross over to a scaling in time controlled by the classical aging exponent. So indeed, our G flow and non-equilibrium dynamics in these dynamical phase transitions, in these instances of aging in isolated systems, are two phases of the same metal. 
I could show you also the magnetization, but it would like very similar, just keep in mind that this double crossover will appear, so you will not, not just have a single initial slip, but a double one, like here. And the last slide is to tell you that, indeed, what we are discussing can be done in laboratories. There has been done a recent experiment in the group of Marcus Obertaler, where they discussed the critical quench of a two-component Bose gas. Their effective field theory specifically for the setup they can do is an ising model, and in some sense the quench is providing a temperature, as I said, so they just see the transition from a quantum scaling to a gapped physics. But it is to say that we are close to an experiment, and in some sense the richer dynamical crossovers we see could be potentially reproduced in other experimental setups. My last slide doesn't deserve words, it's just an overview. I try to answer the question I posed at the beginning, but uh, just to warn you, they are very specific. For this instance of non-equilibrium quantum criticality, if you change quantum criticality out of equilibrium, you get different answers. But if you like, it's the goal to encompass all these instances in a single framework, and we are working on that. Thanks for the attention. Thank you.